Hi. Hello. This is Tutor. Tutor from U Plus Training. Today we will be learning how to log into a uh, server, the on-premise server, SAP S4 Simple Finance. So here, once you get in here, you have a logon icon. So user ID and password will be given to you by the organization. So here user credentials. So give your user details, password. Now here we are in the user menu that is SAP Easy Access screen. Now when we come to SPRO, so this is the SPRO screen where we are getting navigation, SAP reference IMG. So this is all about your financial accounting, the uh, concepts. Suppose if you're working with the conversion concepts, so conversion migrating to S4 HANA, then you're going to work with this by migration and my migration of your customizing part, that is preparations and migration of your general ledger, uh, preparation and migration of the asset accounting, preparation and migration of controlling, Material ledger, house banks, we do here, credit management. But if it is not the migration part, then if it is into planning and consolidation, then we are going to configure the settings from scratch. So it is called brand new implementation also. So, so some enhancements are there compared to your ECC configuration. So let us see the example. Let us see what earlier it looked like and how uh, presently it migrated the, the migration data looks like. So basically earlier we were learning about the uh, GUI and uh, uh, let's say your application layer and any type of uh, database management like your, it can be a SQL, Oracle, Java, any database. So earlier it was in this uh, manner which we have done. So, Now let's say your data, for example, let us say your uh, database management. Precise. Now this is your database management. For example, let's say this is your application server. Application layer. And then comes your GUI. So this was the actual uh, now present scenario what we were working. Right, G1. Now, uh, if we want, for example, let us say a sales processing, 
let us say we are talking about the sales processing if there is to be uh, done a uh, sales processing then how it does so basically if there is a sales order processing it has to uh, get the information the accounting document data index data price determination conditions uh, price control loading and unloading everything have to be mentioned in that particular data now for example so first you give the information so where you load the information is let's say it is loaded here so that is information is loaded from loaded in uh, gui then that particular information you will get it uh, once it is loaded it has to get into your application layer right so once the data is loaded then that particular data will be getting into the application layer where in application layer it will be sorting out all the uh, data whatever it has to be given everything will be given in the application layer like your price determination your control keys your loading points and loading points and all and here in the database server this particular data will be saved is it not so that particular data again here it will be saved in this database what we are maintaining any database it can be a any database this is what actually it is happening so all the configurations were done in the application then that particular data will be executed and it will be saved in your database management so this was the scenario in the earlier uh, mapping what we have done it now what is the difference so let's take a uh, pyramid earlier what happened is the total burden or i can say total uh, information or the total liability of this particular uh, data was all in your application layer itself it was in your application layer itself earlier but now what happened here is now if you see yeah if you see here let's So earlier with the total data was on your application layer itself, right? Now what it is happening here is the large data here, whatever the large data here it is, that is all maintained in your application layer. Now this particular data here it, in this server, it is now in a reverse format. So how reverse now the it has got with the new database wherein the actual configuration all will be done in that particular configuration itself. For example, let's take up here. Here. So the total integration part was more on in your application layer itself. The total burden of this particular layer was an application in ACC. So this is all you are talking about here in ECC or you can tell in classic system but if the same data now whatever data you have done is so this is all happened in your ECC data right now if the same thing if we have to get in First here, we have got the HANA database. So nothing but your HANA disk. In this particular HANA disk, the data is going to save it. So let's say, uh, let us maintain the HANA disk. So let's say this is your HANA disk. Let's say it is a HANA disk. Where well, now here what happens is all your data will be saved in your HANA layer. Now the same sales order processing. So we will be uh, navigating through our uh, concept called NetWeaver. 
so presently we were we are using netweaver 7.5 where we will be talking about the netweaver uh, where the data will be uh, maintained in this particular netweaver so earlier it was in application layer right now it will be in your netweaver that is nothing but nwc So NetWeaver 7.5 is the version. Now this particular data will be maintained or given in the NetWeaver. Ultimately, now the data will save in this HENA database. Earlier, what it has to happen? It used to save in the RDBMS as well as in the application layer. layer. But here, what it happens is directly the data is saved here. And from here itself, we would have a direct output also. So final data is also given here itself. So that is called this particular app, whatever apps we are using. So this particular app now, it is running on new database. So it is on now new database. So that is what we were saying in-memory database. So we will be learning about in-memory database also. So in-memory database, nothing but now your data here it is maintained with in-memory. So now here data is in your in-memory database. Let's say in-memory database. Now the data, again, it is not going to save it in any platform. It is directly, it is in your hard disk and that is maintained under uh, database and this is your final result will transfer so whatever data is there this particular data will be transferred to your final so this all whole process whatever we were doing right now so this whole process this particular process here this all process we can do it in sap in s4 hana through even called the major thing that is Fiori app. So here we can also view this particular data through Fiori app also. So this is the actual structure for your S4, SAP S4 HANA. This was here in classic Western. Now if you see the total burden of this particular uh, uh, information, if you see the total burden is on your database itself. It is not either on your, uh, uh, what you say, uh, uh, server. The total main information is on your hard disk itself. So you can see there is a diversification. So total now here it is on hard disk. So let uh, small information or I can say very negligible thing is on your NetWeaver. And the total information is now transported to your hard disk. That is HANA database module. So this is how the uh, uh, traditional versus uh, classical or classical versus traditional, traditional versus S4 HANA methodology takes place now. So this will be, we will be learning practically also. So now what I want to tell you here is in SAS S4, we have a table called AC DOCA or AC DOCA we can also call it as. So let us view the table. So here, as we have learned that uh, few tables are removed, index tables and all, and the total table is mentioned here, AC Doka table. For example, uh, let us see with one of the company code. Let's say, okay, let me go with one company code. Okay. Okay, ledger. So here we work with, with non-leading leading ledgers, right? So here instead of updating ledger directly, I'm giving company code and execute it. Okay. So let us update a ledger. Leading ledger. Okay. Actually, 
we didn't configure any company code right so i am selecting any company code available company code data itself so once we configure it we will also checking with that company code Save and company code. So I've selected randomly. Okay, it's not showing you the entries over here. So let's go for the standard company code. Or let me try and scan the other company. So you can see. So this is the AC Doka table. If you want to view the table, here you can see it is in different currencies as well. We have got all the accounting documents. For example, here table documentation is there. Check table. So if you see all the table information is available here, your object type, your asset number, your document types, posting key, nothing but even it is an asset accounting or management accounting, everything forms part of your AC Doka table here. So asset classes, everything are maintained here in that particular information. So you can see segment wise, cost center, universal journal entry ledgers, everything is maintained. So here, what you do is we maintain all the or all the tables. For example, let us take a small example. Uh, now let's take a small table, a uh, small example here. For example, let's see the same thing, uh, sales order processing. So when you when you when you when you when you're processing a sales document, first prior information you require is your accounting document, right? So let's say your accounting document here. So when you do your sales order processing, first it will update your BSEC table. So we should know what is BSEC table. So it is your accounting document table where the header data will be maintained. So, so it would first update in your basic table. Then at the same time, it will also update in your BSID table also. That is again your uh, accounting secondary type of table your customer's table because it is a sales order processing. BSID table. Then the same information is again processed in your COAP, COEP, where uh, you need to maintain your uh, uh, controlling cost object details. So here in COOP, COEP, you maintain cost object details, line items relating to your cost object. And the same time, it will also reflect in your BSAD table, BSAK table, nothing but your vendor line items, customer line item table, BSAD table, let's say. BSAK table as well in the total table. So even in nowadays, uh, in the new GL concept, the, the data will also be configured or maintained in your new GL table also, sorry, total table. So which is nothing but your Fagel Flaxit. So FAGL, FLEXT. 
so it is f a g l f l e x t as well flexa table also fagel flexa that is again your uh, uh, total table for your controlling line items so what is happening here is one document one document processed so that has to be reflected fagel flexa so one document posted that used to be reflected in two controlling do in two documents so one document when when it is posted it used to update in the two ways one is in your accounting document and another one is in your original document for example if we check into ecc version so let me get into ecc version so if we process one accounting document that would generate you two document two document numbers one will go with your accounting document and other one with your uh, controlling document so let's see that so i'm just uh, getting into the ecc server uh, i'll go with some x company details fb03 so here uh, let's go with a company code any company code for my last batch so i'm selecting one of the company code which relates to the last batch so okay let me go with ibm1 okay click on the document list so i would select one of the document mm, okay okay so there are no documents in this particular company code posted yet okay yeah now for example i will select one of the document and let us uh, okay so we understood that is a salaries account uh, bank which is posted in usd currency and uh, okay here cost center is not affected though it is not affected if we go to the document and check it up accounting documents so there are no because it is not there is no cost object related so let's see an entry where the cost object should be uh, affected posted in controlling okay let me select the last one okay in here it is not affected no cost object okay so let us go with some other company code and view it okay okay let me view one of the document uh i don't know okay
we have done our own data, it won't, uh, we don't find such a, a long time to browse the data. But now we are relying on somebody else data, right? Because we have not yet started the configuration. So before starting configuration itself, I just want to show you a few things which are related, few key points we should know before we enter into the configuration. Okay, no worries, we'll be doing that later. So what happens here is, so now earlier in SAC, ACC, once you process one sales document which affected your cost center, nothing but that particular details have to be entered in your profit center, that is your controlling objects also, cost objects also have to be updated. Then parallelly, that particular entry used to update in your BSEC as well as COAP table. But now what happened is, all these table entries are few of the index tables are removed and all are now migrated or maintained in one single table called AC Doka. So now all these tables, all this information are now part of your AC Doka or AC Doka, we can say Doka. Now this all this, you know, whatever uh, we have done in uh, what is updated in your BSEC, what is updated in your, uh, what you say, the COAP, what is updated in your BS, BSID. Now everything forms part of your DOCA table. So everything, Fagal Flagset and Fagal, uh, Fagal Flagsa, everything now forms your AC DOCA table. So here we are entering one universal ledger, which is also called single source of truth. So here, all the information will be maintained in one particular table that is AC Doking. So now this is way where we integrate into this. Now let's get into Fiori. So let us see how we are going to uh, log into Fiori also. So it is a bit uh, public uh, base. So it takes a bit time to process. So here also for the uh, de Fiori details also for Fiori launch pad, we get uh, user details, user credentials, which will be given to you by the organization. So as it is a public, so it takes few uh, uh, time to log in. But for you in your organization, as it would be a private thing, so it won't take that much information. So let's say any app, so any, any, any account, whatever you want to do, any user activities, for example, whatever we used to do it in the uh, uh, SAP user menu, everything can be maintained here. It can be through anything. So here we can see the master data, which is there, different master data is available here. So we can see, it would be a bit slow. Yeah, here we can see all the master data information. Here we can directly create your uh, cost centers. You can delete the cost centers. For example, we want to create cost element groups. Yes, we can create it from here itself. So here we can create the cost element groups. For example, if you want to search all apps, still we can search it here. For example, document display. So here in the profile, we can see what are the free screens we have done. And here in the all fields, we have different type of apps. So banks related as if now bank banking app, as I said that it is now removed in uh, S4 HANA. It has migrated to cash and liquidity management. But yes, if you want to uh, check out your cash and back also, we can still do it in theory. 
as well in NWBC, that is a uh, NetWeaver uh, business application. So through Fiori app also, we can do the user part, whatever user access details what we are doing, that particular can be done through your Fiori. But it takes you know, uh, a bit time to uh, pull the data. As I said, it is a private uh, public version. So, so reports for asset accounting. So you have the reports of asset accounting here. You can see in the master data. So we have got the different master data available. So your, for example, manage profit centers. Here, another concept, a new edition here is in Esmohana we talk a new concept relating to business partner. So here BP. So we also maintain business partners here. So business partners concept was not there in your ECC version, though it was there in the new GL concept, but that was not that much, uh, you know, used. But now here in Espohana, we mostly work with business uh, partner concept, wherein business partner can be your customer, can be your vendor, or any employee itself. So here we create business partner details also. So for example, let's get into business partner. So we can have a search over here. Takes a bit time. Yeah, so we can see here. So manage business partner, file download for business partners, credit utilization for your business partners. What is a mass change request you can maintain for your business partners? So this way we log in the Fiori app as well. So now first we will be learning about the few configurations of your. Uh, As for HANA, before migration, pre-migration, what are the configurations? Nothing but we will be learning here uh, all the configurations related to your uh, Greenfield implementation, nothing but the brand new implementation. Then yes, we will also be learning how to do the Delta configurations, that is your Brownfield configurations. So first we will be uh, getting the SPRO screen, the backend screen. So the basic configurations, what we will be doing is the configuration of your company, configuration of your company code. Your org structure will be anyway same here in even in Espohana, but with few enhancements like here, we define the extension ledgers as well, uh, leading and non-leading ledgers, simulation ledgers. Then we define uh, more than, uh, I said we can define more than eight currencies. So that concept, we do it here. So if you see here, so when we are into conversion, yes, as I said, we will be doing this part, but now we are, we are going to configure the settings right from the initial thing of structure, organizational structure, we would configure. 
so let's see the company company code structure plan configurations purchase organization configurations and the assignments so with few enhancements as i said we will be working with the uh, leading ledgers non leading ledgers extension ledgers as well as the different currencies which are enhancements in your sap s4 hana basic settings so first uh, in your bbp given first configuration would be your organizational structure so here we would configure the organizational structure which is your uh, definition of your company company code and all so so let's get into the enterprise structure enterprise structure definition financial accounting then let's configure a company so as we know it is defined with six digits alphanumeric key so let's say a new company like yeah let us give one number and let's say brand new implementation this is your company name let's say okay so if the company has name too we would give so brand i say brand new company in street street let's say one street for your po box number postal code number your city so let's say your city country language and currency enter save so let's here company so brand new company enter save it in the request now let's go for the company code or credit control area configuration new entries so let us go with the same code currency this call your variant so i will go for v3 then the next configuration is all about your company code which is apply vital given here also so edit company code data new entries so brand new company and the city details country currency language so when you save it would ask you the complete details of your organization so in real life anyways you would have your uh, bbp so in bbp they'll be mentioning what all the configuration details have to be given before migration country in enter now the other configuration talks about business area so we know, we should have a clarity that there is difference between your business area as well as your business partner so i am just going with one business area as my branch of the location so business operations takes place in only one location what we are saying now here we would also define the segment so segment reporting what we call it as so new entry so we can view in s4 hana uh, we can view a particular one of the advantage of moving or migrating from ecc to s4 hana is also about your segment reporting so we can view the reports based on the different segments so it is one of the character which we will be learning in new gl concepts document splitting procedure so here well let's say we have three segments so let us create a segment so let's say segment 1 segment 
let's say we have a segment, three segments, and you want to view your reports in three segments. Enter, save, enter. So here we do define the cost elements or cost objects here itself, primary and secondary cost elements. So FS00 screen is totally different in S4 HANA. That way would be easy of viewing it and profit center also. To maintain this profit center, we require the uh, controlling area. So we would do this later stage. So let us go for the assignments of your org structure of your finance part. So assign company to comfort to company position. Give your company code. So we have defined our company. Enter save. Then assign company code to credit control area, which is also an enhancement in SAP S4. Okay, so this is our structure for your finance. We would also have an off structure for the uh, logistics, nothing but we would define the valuation level. So valuation level is always by default your plant. So we would define a plant here. So these are the plant parameters. So I'm defining it for the uh, logistics general level uh, configurations. And also define the location. So let us say it is in Hyderabad location. One of the location. Now let's divide, define the division. So division is like your your uh, you know different diversifications. Like what all divisions you have it. New entries. So let's say division is zero one. So let's say division one. Uh, for your company. So let's identify it with company. Okay. Save the data. So this is your logistics general. Now let's get into sales and distribution. We define sales organizational structure. So define sales organization new entries. So I would prefer giving the same code for the organization, sales organization structure also. Enter, save. Now go back. So define copy, delete your distribution channel, like how many distribution channels the organization has. So let's say we do have two distribution channels. That is, one is direct customer. So let's say it's direct customer. And let's say we do have a dealer. So we do through dealer also. Enter, save. Now let us define the sales office. So here we are maintaining the sales office also with the same code. So let us assume we have the sales office here in the same uh, plant location.
enter save so sales group so sales office and sales groups are two different entities so sales office is a place where the administration part takes place and sales group is all of your sales team put together so let's see and just say so let us first complete the assignment part of your logistics so spro img assignment logistics general so assign plan to company port new entries so as we know that whichever project it can be company code plays a vital role so that is why we need to assign the company code to the all the sub modules over here in our organizational structure assign business area or to the division so here we would go for plant or division so new entries so we define the division so we also define the business area in the finance of structure enter same to go back so sales and distribution so remaining to the sales and distribution will be continuing in the next session thank you